The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Good afternoon, and welcome to Chit Chatting with Jocelyn. This afternoon, we have Dr. David Strong. Strang, Strang excuse me. It's all right. Dr. David Strang. And he is going to be providing us with an update on the Wyndham incident. So just to recap very quickly, there uh, we had the November 3rd election, and it was a national and a state election, local elections, and uh, the town of Wyndham had an issue. Do you want to take it from there? Sure. On the ballot in Wyndham that day, there were four seats in the New Hampshire House of Representatives on the ballot. Republicans won all four seats. Mm -hmm. A Democrat, however, came within 24 votes of winning one of those seats. Okay. So she asked for a recount, which is absolutely her right to do. It's I America. support that. Yeah. In New Hampshire, we don't do machine recounts. We do hand recounts only because hand oh. counting is felt to be more accurate mm -hmm. than machine counting. And on the hand recount on November 12th, nine days later, Republicans gained, on average, 300 votes for each of those seats, or over 6% from their original vote total on November 3rd. That's not a normal number. That is not in any way a normal number. That is five, huge. 5, 10, kind of normal, maybe 20, maybe? Um, for, for most recounts, most candidates gain a few votes. Okay. It's what I call background noise, five votes here, 10 votes mm -hmm. there. To gain 300 or 6% compared to your original total is huge. Times four people. Times four people. To make the fact even worse, the Democrat who challenged lost 99 votes or 2.2% of her original total. Oh my so 6% gain on one side of the ticket, 2.2% loss on the other side of the ticket. Those are enormous variances from a, an initial machine count. And local only. Uh, local only. Now, now, we've never had a variation of that magnitude mm -hmm. in the history of New Hampshire elections. So um, Ms. St. Laurent, who lost uh, the, the recount, mm -hmm. uh, you only get one in the state. You can't keep recounting until you get it, you know, a, a result that you like. So she appealed the ruling to the Ballot Law Commission. Mm -hmm. They said, we're going to certify the results of the hand recount. But they uh, asked unanimously for the Attorney General to investigate this discrepancy. That request was ignored. The attorney for the town of Wyndham, uh, Bernard Campbell, wrote a letter to the attorney general on November 19th asking him to investigate. Mm -hmm. He never received a reply. Along the way, the Board of Selectmen asked for an investigation. Their plea was ignored. So there was established a pattern that we have a discrepancy. There's no fact checking that needs to be done here. Mm -hmm. We have a November 3rd machine count that does not agree with the November 12th hand recount. It's the widest discrepancy in the history of New Hampshire elections. It must be explained. The majority of elections are decided within six percentage points or, or less. Right. So we have to reassure people that our machines are operating properly. And, for, and to have the AG ignore, we'll use the word ignore at this point, requests, numerous requests to investigate this makes it even more suspect, makes people even more anxious. It certainly doesn't reassure people that the officials that we have at the state level are doing their job. Mm -hmm. You and I, uh, if we don't like the results in our town elections, do not have the right to go down and engage in our own hand recount. The entire town could assemble outside of the town hall and they do not have the authority to go in and do mm -hmm. a hand recount. We have uh, certain appointed and elected officials who do have that ability, and when they refuse to uh, carry out their duties, it's very upsetting to the people. And when you're dealing with an issue that is is so sensitive, such as voter integrity, Especially election year, integrity, yeah. then it makes people very angry when our appointed officials mm -hmm. don't listen to our concerns. And considering they work for us, and I know people say that a lot, but it is the truth, they do work for us and our taxes pay their salaries. So at some point, there has to be, they have to be our voice, they have to hear us. 
Absolutely. The the bigger issue here is is this is not a partisan issue. This is God, do no. the people have the ability to trust mm -hmm. the machines that are counting our votes? And the reason why that this is important for not just the town of Windham is because 85% of New Hampshire towns use this the same machine when they count their elections. Mm -hmm. There's only one machine that can be used in the state of New Hampshire and it's called the AccuVote OSX, OS being optical scanner. Mm -hmm. um, the other 15% tend to be the smaller towns. Dixville Notch, for example, which has right. five voters, does not need a machine to count five ballots. But larger towns, Manchester, Derry, Nashua, for example, those are the ones that use Amherst, this machine. we use three. And 85% of New Hampshire's towns use that one machine and need to be reassured, hey, these, these machines, which are aging, Dinosaurs. Yeah, they're at least um, 20 years old. They're if well I over 20 years yeah. old. Um, they're no longer manufactured. Even um, in in most towns, when parts break, they have to go to other states to find replacement parts for these. So That's they are sad. aging, and we need to be reassured that they're yeah. operating properly because we have a discrepant count here from the November 3rd general election that needs to be explained. And as you said, 85, we have 85% of the state uses those machines. So how many other towns potentially? could have an, uh, a discrepancy. So where are we now? Did Finally, did the AG get back to you? Uh, I know Senator Bob uh, Guida was involved in this and really um, took this to heart and pushed it forward with all of you. Well, there's a lot that went on in between those, mm -hmm. those two points that you just described. Right. Um, what was really uh, aggravating to me as a citizen was that no one at state level was taking any initiative, showing any curiosity to explain this discrepant count. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have loved to have seen our Secretary of State, our Attorney General saying, hold the phone folks, we've got a disparity here, the likes of which we have never seen before. We're gonna launch an investigation and find out what happened. Nothing like that happened. You had numerous people, uh, the Ballot Law Commission, the town attorney for Windham, uh, writing letters which were ignored. I wrote a nine-page letter to the attorney general complete with graphs and statistics urging him to investigate. Nothing. That was ignored. Finally, Senator Guida, who has been a true champion for this incident, mm -hmm. um, was so upset with the attorney general, he called and said, what are you doing ignoring all of these pleas? And within 24 hours, we had a meeting set up for January 4th. But then the sad part was that the attorney general claimed he had no legal authority to investigate this matter, which is absolutely untrue. And furthermore, he said that he wasn't going to court to get that authority that he thought he lacked. So in other words, Nothing to see here, folks. Move, Move along. So this was entirely unacceptable to Senator Guida. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And Absolutely. about two weeks ago, uh, he put forth an amendment to Senate Bill 43, mm -hmm. which would require the Attorney General to investigate this incident. It passed the Senate unanimously, 24 to nothing. Really? Do you know how many resolutions come out of our Senate with unanimous consent? No. Not many. Not many. One or two. <laughs> so it was supposed to go directly to the House floor the following week, okay. bypass the usual committee assignments mm -hmm. and hearings. The Democrats blocked this. They said, no, it has to go through the usual committee hearings. So last Friday, it was heard in the House Election Law uh, Committee. Um, there were, I think, at least 30 or 40 people um, who testified. Okay. There were another three or 400 who had signed in in support. Not a single person spoke against this bill. It had unanimous support. So yesterday, that uh, House Election Law Committee uh, did their executive session, it's called execing the bill, mm -hmm. and they amended it to make it stronger, Str and it passed wow. unanimously, 20 to nothing. Wow, so both passed, both times, both parts of it. Both times, and each time wow. the legislature has another chance to weigh in, it's getting stronger, folks. So the next Finally. step is that it has to go to the House floor for a full House vote. Okay. It could be amended further. I suspect that they're probably just going to use the amendments from I hope the they don't. House Election Law Committee. Yeah. And then um, it would go back to the Senate because it has been changed from the Senate version. And they can either concur, in which case it's passed, okay. and it goes to the governor for signature. They could not concur and put it into a study committee in which case they work out the differences between the House and the Senate, or mm -hmm. the Senate could not concur and vote it inexpedient to legislate, or what they call ITL, in which case the bill would be dead. 
that's not going to happen. There is too much um, focus. There is too much support for this, for we the people to find out what happened to our Well, there's our too votes many eyes on them. There's too many, there's too many people. Th they're under a microscope right now, and if they were smart, they would do the right thing. So far, it looks like they have, that they've heard the people, they've heard you, they've heard Senator Guida, they've heard uh, the town lawyer, and not only the residents of Wyndham, everywhere I go, people are talking about this. It's national, it's international. People on a regular basis say what's happening. And I was like, you'll find out on Thursday, you know, what's happened. And I think it's important that people feel that they actually have something they can do, that we can make a difference, that we do have a voice. And even though in this instance, it was ignored for a couple of months, mm -hmm. finally, it's now where it needs to be. So potentially, when it comes back to the Senate, if, big if, they, they ITL it, it's dead in the water. What happens then? You start all over again, or do we have to walk away? Oh, I think there would be such an outcry, mm -hmm. such an outcry. Um, and, and it's because of the dedication of people like Senator Guida, uh, Wyndham residents, Tom Murray, and Ken Eyring, whom I've been working with uh, very closely, mm -hmm. Um, shows like this where we can get exposure to show the people, hey, something happened here. Um, and if it, it has been, if it is shown that something happened with these machines, well, then the next logical question is, well, was that the only race on the ballot that was affected? We are going to look at other races. They are going to hand count the Senate race and the gubernatorial race. Really? And yes. And, and if those are shown to be off, then the question is going to be, was this the only town that was affected? Remember, 85% of towns in New Hampshire use this big same number. machine. Well, I know and Amherst does. And I, um, I had Ken on the show a couple of weeks back, and he asked um, people within each town, if you know you have the Accu um, vote machines, the Diebold machines, get a copy of the tally tapes, the tapes mm -hmm. that came out of those voting machines. Mm -hmm. um, and get hold of those. I got them for the town of Amherst. So Good. I have them and I'll be giving them to him. So there is something that people can do. We don't just sit by. Obviously, Wyndham, yeah, uh, we need to support you. We need to make sure that we weigh in and, and let the uh, representatives know how we feel. Because as you very um, aptly described, we have 85% of the towns in the state of New Hampshire. This is huge. Mm -hmm. So... So this, let's say the Senate votes and everybody says, yep, let's go forward with this. Now what happens? Well, uh, the bill stipulates that an audit, uh, a forensic audit, has to be done within 45 days of passage. Okay. And the audit team will consist of three, uh, three individuals, one chosen by the town of Wyndham, one chosen jointly by the Secretary of State and the Attorney General, and those two individuals will jointly um, decide on a third auditor. So you'll have three individuals conducting wow. the audit. The audit will include an examination of the ballots, mm -hmm. and it will also include an examination of the machines. Why the ballots? Well, when the Secretary of State's office did the hand recount on November 12th, they never recorded how many ballots they actually counted. They only counted the totals for those races. So people, when we learned that on average 300 votes were gained for the four winning candidates, right away said, oh, well, there's 300 ballots that weren't run through the machines. That's obvious. Well, we don't know that because they never gave us a total number of ballots. Ugh. But even if that were the truth, how does that explain a loss of almost 100 votes for the, for for the, other the person. challenger? Yes. So, so we need to know how many ballots they actually processed on mm -hmm. the hand recount. They need to recount that race. And again, folks, this is not a recount. It's an audit. It's not going to change the outcome of the Correct. election. But they need to retotal the outcome for those four House races. And they need to run the ballots through the, the four machines again, to see, yep. okay, are we still getting the same numbers that we got from November 12th right. or from November 3rd or both? And then we can actually do an analysis and find out what indeed happened, why we have such discrepant counts. And, and, and let's just go forward with the, there's still a discrepancy. Correct. So now they look at the 
national race. So the Senate and the um, um, and the governor gubernatorial, yeah, correct. So they'd look at those, and that would kind of go through the same thing again. Correct. So when they run all ten thousand ballots through each of the four machines, mm -hmm. God help somebody if they don't all agree with each other. Um, but then they're also going to recount by hand the race for Senate and governor and compare those with the machine results. And if we're getting different results, then we need these analysts to delve into the machines. What's wrong with the machines such mm -hmm. that we're getting discrepant counts? So a lot of this is built on supposition, right. but we're going to take this one step at a time. We know we have a discrepant count for the New Hampshire House races. Let's reanalyze those, and then we'll go and look at other races on the ballot and see if there's discrepancies there as well. Good Lord, this is insane. Now, at some point I had heard that the state um, wanted the Wyndham machines. Correct. And I was told <clears throat> that they can request that, but the town of Wyndham does not have to comply because the town owns those machines. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, two weeks ago, I believe, was when the Senate uh, passed the, the initial version of SB 43 mm -hmm. unanimously. And that was either a Thursday or a Friday. And it was supposed to go to the House floor the following Monday. Uh, that Monday, the um, Attorney General's office, Nicholas Chan Yen, who is one of the assistants who oversees election law, sent an email to the town of Wyndham informing them that they uh, had planned to take possession of, I believe was the language that they used, therefore uh, voting machines. And to her credit, I was told that the town clerk said over my dead body. Uh, the machines Bravo. are owned by the towns. They yes. are not owned by the state. They are not loaned to the towns. They are purchased by the towns. And I think that's important for people to understand that Absolutely. your taxpayer money purchased these machines and we, the people in these towns and these towns, own them. And Absolutely. nobody can demand them. Right now, there is so much suspicion going mm -hmm. on as to why we have a discrepant count. It's exacerbated by what happened nationally. Yep. I understand that. But right now, we have a discrepant count between November 3rd and November 12th. Could you imagine what kind of integrity this process would immediately lose if the Attorney General's office absconded with the machines? I don't care where you take them. They'll no longer be in the possession of the town that owns them. People will immediately not trust the outcome Correct. of the audit. They need to stay locked in the town vault at Wyndham, where mm -hmm. they are now. They need to not be touched from their condition on November 3rd, which they haven't. Right. And then the day of the audit, wherever it is, they show up at the audit still in the possession of the mm -hmm. Wyndham Town officials so that there is a chain of custody, then people, I think, can have some degree of trust exactly. and faith in the process. Which is very interesting because in the town of Amherst and um, is it Bedford is another town, that they had already removed, um, what did you call the them? Memory the, the memory boards. The memory boards. Yes. So how wonderful that Wyndham did not send those back. Correct. The memory boards actually instruct the AccuVote machine how to count the ballots. Okay. And actually, if you look at the ballot, it's, it's, it's based on a grid format, mm -hmm. much like a bingo card, such that if you voted for Trump, the machine is, is programmed to read B7 as a vote for Trump, whereas okay. a vote for Biden might be G7. Okay. Well, that changes with the next election where you're, we just had our March town elections. Most of the um, uh, items on the ballot are warrant articles, which are going to be in a totally different format. Correct. So they have to actually exchange the memory board to read this new ballot. So what they typically do is a month after the prior election, so December 3rd, for example, they would send the old memory boards um, to LHS, yeah, which LHS, is the right. Salem, New Hampshire-based company that um, services these machines. They would reprogram them and then in February send them back to the towns to be installed to read the new March town election ballots. Mm -hmm. Wyndham, to their credit, did not do that. that is they fabulous. actually have the original four machines with the original um, memory boards in there, sealed under lock so that when we audit these ballots, they will be in the exact same condition that they were on November 3rd, which again will lend a higher degree of credibility and trust Absolutely. in the process. And how wonderful that, that somebody thought about that at the time because, it, oh, it, I think it would be really bad. <laughs> I 
we're going to leave it at that. Well, really, that's, really that's bad. why when the attorney general's office um, jumped the gun and said, we're going to take possession of these machines, everyone said, whoa, wait a minute, what are you doing? Under mm -hmm. what authority are you taking possession of these? They are not yours. They belong to the town. It's great that this bill passed the Senate unanimously. It hasn't even been voted on by the House. Right. It hasn't even been presented to the governor for signature. Um, aren't you jumping the gun a little bit? They backed off. Within three days, they said, uh, we're, we're going we're to retract good. our yep. email but they still pending have... the outcome of the vote in uh -huh. the House. But they still have your ballots. They still have the ballots. Those are in the state archives under the lock and key of the Secretary of State. Okay. Well, we'll see. In sealed boxes. In sealed boxes. Yep. All right. So um, we shall see. So we shall see. We shall but, see. Um, this is this is just absolutely amazing, and I'm going to be able to go on online tonight and and uh, update everybody. I have uh, several people from across the United States. We have people from Australia. We have people from England. We have a lady from Italy, and I'm trying to think of another country. It might be. I think he's from Germany. All asking about Windham. Great. And I'm just going to keep pushing it out there. We have got to stay on our representatives, and they have got to hear our voices. And it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on. I mean, if that had been 300 votes to four Democrats and a Republican lost 99, I would feel the same way. I'm sure you and all the other people would feel exactly the same way. So I'm, I'm, this is more important than just who wins and loses. This is not a partisan issue. I, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, when most political contests are decided by margins of less than 6%, if you've got a greater than 6% discrepancy between a machine count and a hand recount, how do you look a candidate in the eye from any party mm -hmm. who says, well, you said I lost my race by 2%. How do you know I didn't win by 4%? And the answer is they can't right. because they didn't look into this. And what's incredibly unacceptable to me is that they had no curiosity. They had no desire to look into this until we the people kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And I have to thank you for shows like this, which yeah. have gotten the word out for the uh, undying um, desire of people like Senator Guida mm -hmm. to get an answer. Ken Eyring from, from Windham, Tom Murray from Windham. Um, we've, we've been, you know, the major mouthpieces for this, but without people behind us calling these representatives, emailing them, Senator Guida, who I would have loved to have been sitting here with today said in his 11 years in the legislature, he has never seen an issue such as this one, which has generated more phone calls, more emails, more contacts from citizens. And, and I think it shows you just how concerned we are. Why? Because when we live in a democracy, in my mind, there is nothing more sacred than Definitely. the sanctity of the vote. Mm -hmm. And if we can't trust that the officials who are sitting in elected office governing us are the ones that we truly put there, then our society is going to deteriorate very, very quickly, quickly into yep. chaos and anarchy. I agree. Um, so we can say, and specifically in, in this instance, that the calling, the emailing, the faxing... Um, don't give up. 2712121. Ask for your representative on anything. This is, this is just a, a super huge case, one of the most important. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, constitutional. It's about your right to vote. We have other issues coming up. And this is showing everybody that with a five minute phone call, with a five minute email, I've been told that if they receive, if a representative receives more than 20, 25 phone calls on any one issue, they're blown away. Yep. It's unheard of. Yep. And, and I can't emphasize that enough. I mean, the earliest that this could potentially be voted on from a calendar standpoint mm -hmm. would be next week. Okay. But I don't believe that the House has any venue in which it could meet next week. So it may not be until the week after. But regardless, starting next Monday, folks, if, if you can reach out to your representative Tell them to vote yes on Senate Bill 43, support this measure, um, and that will continue the same type of pressure to let them know how we as the citizens of New Hampshire feel about our election integrity and how we have to be reassured that we have trust in our machines. Because if we don't, the next step is 
town after town is going to have warrant articles saying, get rid of our machines. That's, yep. that's decided at a town level. Each town can decide, you know what, we're, we're done with the machines. We're mm -hmm. going to hand count only. And if, and if there's any further attempts to block this, that's going to be our next rallying cry. I love it. So again, reach out to your representative, email, phone, fax, SB43, which Correct. is known as Senate Bill 43. And I'm not talking down to anybody, but people spit it out so quickly. They're like, what, what, what? SB is Senate Bill, and it's 43. 43. 43. And uh, start calling. You can start calling tomorrow. Monday would be probably just as good and say, this is, you need to vote on this. You need to support it. We want you to support it. We strongly suggest you support it because this is about the integrity of all of our votes. No, like you said, it, it's not partisan. It's not Democrat. It's not Republican. It's not independent. It's we, the people. And we have got to stand up we have got to make our voices heard, and we need to stand not behind you, shoulder to shoulder with you. We need to stand shoulder to shoulder saying, this is the Constitution, this is the law, this is America, this is who we are. You know, I hate the word transparency. I really do. Oh, it's become so overused in the last, you know, 8 to 12 years, hasn't oh, it's, it? Oh, it's awful. And I find, sadly, that the people who use it are sometimes the least transparent of politicians. Absolutely. They, they throw it around like it's a, you know, a Frisbee. So I want to thank you so much for coming back and updating us on the Wyndham incident. And uh, I just want to invite you and uh, Senator Guida to get back to us as soon as we have that next vote. Tell us what we need to do, what you would like the audience to do, how we can help you. And I think first off, everybody go get, if you've got these machines in your town, go get a copy of those tally tapes. Absolutely. I'm sure there will be more developments to come in the next week or two. And uh, I know Senator Guida and I would love to come back and update you. But in the meantime, we, we very much appreciate your support and your show to get the word out to the citizens Absolutely. of Absolutely, anytime. So you're welcome back anytime. Keep us posted. Stay tuned, everybody, because this is big. You are seeing history unfold right here in New Hampshire, first in the nation, literally. Have a great afternoon. See you next week. Thanks for joining me, Jocelyn, on Chit Chatting. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.